I'm gonna save you an hour of your time by explaining to you everything you need to know about GPT-5 in just a few minutes. In this video, I'll talk about some of the new features, evaluations, and demos of GPT-5, including potentially replacing your doctor, as well as a lot of vibe coding. OpenAI just today released their new GPT-5, GPT-5 Nano, and GPT-5 Mini models, which are claimed to have PhD level reasoning, which are well supported by their increases in accuracy across a variety of tasks and benchmarks, including coding, reasoning, and design. GPT-5 has also improved its ability to answer open-ended questions and provide the most accurate facts in its responses so that it can pick up on subtleties it wasn't able to before. That way, GPT-5 has a better understanding of when to respond quickly versus giving itself more time to think and providing expert level responses. This is especially useful when using ChatGPT's new vibe coding interface with their Canvas feature, which they've had before, but now you can have the software app running live. That way you can give it faster feedback and you can have faster development as you vibe code with the app. And the Cursor CEO gives GPT-5 a thumbs up for its coding abilities. GPT-5 also now generates what's called a preamble to tell you its thought process before it writes any code. That way you can stop GPT-5 from going into the wrong rabbit hole and you have more control over what it makes. There's also a new verbosity parameter that you can use to adjust how much detail you want your GPT-5 response to be, specifically when you use the OpenAI API. In a live stream, they showed a demo of GPT-5 making a snake style game with a language learning component to it, which was pretty cool. But I wonder that since a lot of people have made and posted snake games online, especially in multiple languages, I really wonder how well GPT-5 can code a brand new game that it hasn't seen before. Game developers, I think your job is safe for now. They also showed how GPT-5 was able to generate animations and pictures that feel a lot more human and personalized, which is very lacking in most AI-generated content you see online. And the increased human qualities of GPT-5, like its ability to show more emotions, is shown in ChatGPT's improved voice communication that makes it feel more personal, like you're actually talking to someone. I personally think the most interesting part of the GPT-5 livestream was them showing how GPT-5 has improved its accuracy with health diagnosis and reasoning benchmarks, and then them actually showing real examples of people who've used GPT-5 to get better recommendations than their own doctor in how to treat their own diseases. AI has historically always been used in some capacity to help doctors better diagnose diseases, but GPT-5 is at the level where it could potentially become a future physician's assistant and helping them diagnose diseases much more accurately, as well as train future doctors in medical school. On the research side, the researchers behind GPT-5 said that the main reason why it's better than previous models is that OpenAI used the previous four series models to generate synthetic data that GPT-5 can then learn from. If you don't know what synthetic data is, it's basically AI generated data that's meant to give the models more high quality examples to learn from when responding to prompts. That way you end up having more, essentially doubling the amount of training data you have with your model, you have more control over it and generally end up with more accurate models without too much overfitting if you're able to generate correct synthetic data, which they were able to do. On the T-squared coding benchmark, GPT-5 achieves a 96.7% accuracy, which is state of the art and over 50% better than the other models. They also evaluated GPT-5 on three other benchmarks involving instruction following that also beats previous models. They also added capabilities of GPT-5 to connect to your Google Calendar, email, GitHub, and among other apps, so that way you can take full advantage of the agentic architecture that they're embedding now into ChatGPT and connecting further. And these are the most important takeaways that I got from the GPT-5 live stream and blog, which you can go check out in the description below if you want to read more in depth. Hopefully this was a pretty good overview of the newest features of GPT-5. Despite what Sam Altman says, we're still pretty far away from AGI, but if you want to stay ahead of the latest developments and learn about when AGI comes out before everyone else, check out the rest of my channel where I explain the latest models and also examples and projects of how to use them. 
Thank you for watching.